Yes, Pastor, you're clear. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, glory to his name. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Shine upon you and give we you thank peace. you, Lord. We glorify your In the name, name Father. Of Jesus. Glory to his name. We thank you, Father. Amen. Good morning, each and every one of you. Thank you for joining with me and my church family, 4 One Vision Church. We thank God for this privilege of coming before you and sharing the word of God with you this morning. Amen. Truly, our hearts goes out to each and every one of you who have um, suffered during this time. Those of you who are going through struggles of life and challenges, we pray that God's peace would be upon you, that his love would overshadow you, that you would be blessed and highly favored and that even in the midst of everything you go through, that God would give you peace and he would give you the strength to endure. We know that we're in a time of great challenge. We're in a time of great difficulties, but there is encouragement from the Lord for each and every one of us. There is encouragement from the Lord for each and every one of us so that we can experience joy even in this time, even in this season, even in whatever we're going through, there is joy for each of us. There is joy. The word of God says weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And so this morning, I want to encourage you um, that God is well able to help you through all of your challenges, all of your situations, all of your difficulties. God has helped you. He says, you have not because you ask not. He says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And so this morning, we just want to encourage you um, this morning, just finish in worship and prayers with the saints at the church. And, and now we want to come before you this morning with the word of God. And so if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. And when you get there, I'm going to be reading from verse 1 down to verse uh, 4. And then I'm going to read verse 13, from verse 1 to 4, and then verse 13. Amen. And it says, Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Machar, the son of Emiel, in Lodabar. When you look down at verse 13, So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both his feet. Amen. Truly, God is worthy to be praised. 
This morning, I'm going to talk to you for a few moments. It's under the table. It's under the table. I want to talk to you about this because this is so powerful. This morning, as I was going through the word and just really asking God, Father, you know, confirm your word, share with me, God, because, you know, people are going through many challenges. People are going through many issues. Those of us, even in our own church, we have lost loved ones and lost family and friends. And, and it's, it's a lot of things. The word of God says weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In this story that we read today, if you read the entire chapter, you'll find that David, when David was established on the throne, that David, out of his own heart, because David had a good heart, David wanted to, he wanted to show kindness to Saul's house. Why? Because of his friendship and his promise to Jonathan. If you remember the scripture where it says, Jonathan loved David as his own soul, right? They became very close friends, even to the point that when David came into the kingdom, David wasn't a prince. No, David was a shepherd boy. David was so insignificant until even when the priest came to anoint the new king out of Jesse's house, his father's house, that the, the priest came and said, I came to anoint one of your sons to be king. And the father called every son except David. And in other words, David was not considered worthy to be a king. But what we find is that God told um, the prophet Samuel, he told Samuel when King Saul was messing up, he says that I'm searching for someone who's after my own heart, someone that I have chosen who, you know, yeah, you might not think they're anything. You might not think that they are worth anything, but guess what? God says there is value in you. I'm here to tell you people of God, just like you and I this morning, that there are many things in your life that you go through and maybe you might be thinking, does God really see me? Does God really know what I'm going through? I'm here to tell you that God looks at your heart and God sees value in you. So as we know, David was chosen and anointed to be king over um, Israel. But in this time, the heart of David comes out and David recognizes that, you know what, I made a promise to Jonathan that I would show kindness to his heart, his house, because Jonathan showed kindness to me. Jonathan took off his priestly robe and he gave it to me. He took off his, his belt and his, his sword and everything, his shield, and he gave it to me so that although I'm a shepherd boy and people see me as being insignificant, guess what? Now I'm covered with a priestly robe. So now that David became king, David was now not going to forget his promises to his friend. Isn't that wonderful that friends, true friends, keep their promises? And more importantly, let me tell you, God keeps his promises. Here we find David now says, I'm going to show kindness to the house of Saul. And he checks and finds out that there's one son left over from the house, a man named Mephibosheth. But what we find is that Ziba, the servant, said these words, but he's lame in both of his feet. Glory to his name. Listen, this is so insignificant and you may not even know it. The reason why it's significant is because David, being after the heart of God or having the heart of God, David represents God. And if you look in the book of Deuteronomy, if you look in the book of Leviticus, if you look in all the book of Numbers, you'll find that God speaks about that you cannot offer him anything that is lame, anything that is wounded. And it became the, 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 the status or it became the standard of even what kings would do that kings would not have anybody in their presence that didn't look good, that wasn't dressed properly, and that wasn't uh, in this proper form. 
in other words, when the king walked into the room, everybody had to stand up. When the king walked into the room, everybody had to bow. When the king walked into the room, everybody had to behave in a certain way. You remember when uh, the queen of Sheba came into Solomon's uh, house to test out Solomon, the word of God says that when she saw, she heard of his wisdom and she wanted to test him out. She wanted to make sure that she heard that this guy was the wisest man in all of the world. And she said, I wanna find out for sure what this guy is all about. And here it was, right? The Queen of Sheba came to test him. She came to try him, right? But then when she came there, the word of God says, when she saw the order of his house, when she saw his servants and how everything was lined up just perfectly, the Bible says she had no more energy to test him out, right? And, and guess what? Every king, just like Solomon, just like David, and every king before, they would never put anybody who wasn't perfect before them in their presence. No, you could not sit at the king's table. But I'm here to tell you this morning that because of Jesus, it's under the table. See, because Mephibosheth, his lame legs, you would not know unless you look under the table. But it all under the table. Somebody need to testify that what I'm going through is under the table, that all of my battles are under the table, that you don't see what God has brought me through. You don't see the battles and the wars and the scars that I've been through. You don't see the troubles that I've faced in my life because Jesus has put it under the table. He has put it under the table so that above the table, I look just like you. Above the table, I am blessed just like you. Here it was, not only did Meshavifat have his, his, his problems under the table, but guess what? God crowned him with honor. He crowned him with honor because whereas everybody else had to stand up, I can still say, stay seated. Didn't the word of God says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that you visited him, you made him a little lower than the angels, but you crowned him with glory and honor. Isn't it marvelous that no matter what the enemy throws at you, God says it's under the table. No matter what sins you've had in your life, guess what? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and us to forgive you of your sins and to um, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? It's thrown in a sea of forgetfulness. It is under the table. All your mess is under the table. Your pain is under the table. For my Bible tells me that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. I'm here to tell you that all your troubles are over. All your troubles are in the past. If you could just put your trust in God this morning, and if you could just come to his table, the word of God says he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm here to tell you that all your weaknesses are under the table. I'm here to tell you that all your drama is under the table. But on top of the table, God has prepared a feast for you. He says that you are seated together with him in heavenly places. So I don't know about you this morning, but I'm excited to know that in spite of what the day may offer, in spite of what the day may present, because each day presents its own problem. I'm here to tell you to take a seat at the table. Take a seat at the table. One psalmist says, and I'll be seated at his feet to worship at his feet. I'll be right here at his feet forever. I'm here to tell you that you need to take a seat at the table of Christ. When you come to him,
him, he will in no wise cast out. When you come to him, he will abundantly pardon. When you call on the name of the Lord, the word of God says, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. I'm here to tell you, it's under the table. Everything that you've gone through is under the table. You might say, well, pastor, I'm still going through right now. Yes, Mephibosheth, he, he was still lame in his feet. He was still lame in his feet, but guess what? He was under the table. Why? Because what happened is that no longer did he have to work for it anymore, but guess what? He had people serving him. In fact, David told Zebra, he told Zeba, he says, all of your children, all of your family must now serve Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth had servants of the Lord. What does that say to us today? The word of God says, his strength, God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. That God's strength is made perfect when you are weak. When you are weak, he is strong. When you are, can't, find the strength to hang on there. Guess what? God hangs on to you. Why? Because it's under the table. He has prepared a table for you. He has paired, prepared a table for you to sit at and to, to enjoy the things that he has prepared for you. Don't you know the word of God says, morning by morning, new mercies I see every morning there are new mercies. I know it was hard last night. I know it was rough this week. I know you have gone through and maybe you're even still going through in your bodies. But know this, there's a table that is prepared for you. There's a table that is prepared for you. For Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'm going to give you a comforter. I'm going to give you someone that's going to be with you, even in the midst of your problems, even in the midst of your trouble, even in the midst of your issues, even in the midst of your drama. Guess what? He says, I will never leave you or forsake you, but I'm going to be with you always. He says, you know, up to now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Don't you know that there's a table set for you? There's a table that's already prepared. You didn't have to do the cooking. You didn't have to do the cleaning. And you, you don't have to do the washing of dishes. I'm here to tell you, all you got to do is sit at his feet. All you got to do is come boldly unto the throne of grace that you might obtain mercy in the time of need. Don't you know our Father loves you? He loves you with an everlasting love. He says nothing. Paul says, what can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? He says nothing, nothing. One psalmist says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that keep, makes me white as snow. No other hope or help I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm here to tell you today that if you could just confess your sins, there is a table set for you. If you could just Yield yourself to the Lord and say, God, here I am. You woke me up this morning. It doesn't matter what I did last night. It doesn't matter where I've been last night. You woke me up this morning. So God, you love me enough to give me breath to breathe, to open up my eyes, to allow me to see the sunshine yet again. It doesn't matter if you're sick in your body right now. Guess what? You are still here in the land of the living. You are still here in the presence of God. You are still here breathing. Your heart is beating. Why? Because God has prepared a table for you. He has prepared a table for you. And he says, come and dine. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and humble of heart, 
come and you shall find rest for your souls. I'm here to tell you this morning, there's a table set for you, Mephibosheth. If you're lame in your legs, if you're weak in your faith, if you're weak in your soul, if you are stumbling, tripping, and falling, if you keep messing up, guess what? There's a table set for you because David said, he says, is there anybody left in the house that I can show kindness to. My Bible tells me the eyes of the Lord in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, the eyes of the Lord is roaming throughout the earth, seeking whose heart is perfect towards him so that he might show himself strong on their behalf. So God is looking for somebody today so that he could be kind to you. God is looking and he's calling out to you. And he says, I want to be kind to you. I want to show you mercy. I want to show you grace. I want to show you my peace. I want to show you my love. I want to show you my goodness. I want to show you my mercy. I want to show you my healing because all of your sins and all of your issues are under the table. It's under the table. On top of the table, you can dine with me. That's what Jesus says. He says, I and my father will come and sup with you. And so all you got to say, yes, Julia, all you got to say is, here I am, Lord. That's what Isaiah said. For the Lord says, whom shall I send and who shall shall go for us. And Isaiah said, after his lips were purged, he says, here am I, send me. I'm here to tell you this morning that it's under the table. It's under the table. All of your sins are under the table. All of your issues are under the table. If you come to the table of the Lord, if you come to the table of the Lord and say, God, here I am. God, one psalmist says, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up, right? And that's what we have to do is, Lord, fill my cup. God, here I am with all my broken pieces, with all my wounded pieces, with all my issues, God, here I am, God. Here I am. Come on, can you just say that? Can you just say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. One psalmist says, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Come on, can you just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I present myself before you, God. I lay myself at your feet, God. You know all my struggles, God. Lord, you know all my pain, God. You know all my issues, God. You know everything that I have to go through, God. You know the times when I'm alone, God. Here I am. Come on, put it in. Put it in. Here I am. Here I am, God. Here I am. That's what the psalmist says. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are God. You're altogether lovely. You're altogether worthy. You're altogether wonderful to me. So God, here I am just as I am. God, I'm coming with all my pieces. God, I'm call, coming with all my brokenness. God, I'm coming with all my sin. God, I'm com, coming with all my pain. God, I'm coming with all my drama. God, I'm coming with all my suffering. God, I'm coming with all my tears. God, I'm coming to you because you said, if I come to you, you will in no wise cast me out. For he says a broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you could just say, God, here I am. Here I am, God, just as I am, Lord. I'm not, I'm not coming with pretense. I'm not coming with falsities, Lord God. I'm not coming with hypocrisy, but I'm coming, Lord God, just as I am with everything that I have, everything that I'm going through, every pain that I feel, every struggle of my soul, every burden of my heart. God, I'm coming just as I am. I'm coming with all my suffering. God, I'm coming with all my pain. God, and even if I can walk to the table, you will carry me to the table. Oh, because you said it is you that gives me the will to do of your good pleasure. And so God, you are well able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Come on, come on, come on, call out on him. Call on him, say, God, I need you right now. God, I need you right now. Here I am, right here, right now, God. 
right here, right now, with everything that I'm going through, God, right here and right now, God, I give it all to you. I give all my burdens to you. I give all my pain. I give all my heartache and my heartbreaks to you, God. I give all my sorrow to you, God. I come weeping, God. I come, God, overburdened, God. I come with the weights, God. I come with the cares, God. I come with my pain and my sorrow, God. Oh, God, surely he has borne our sorrows. Oh, God, so, surely he has carried our griefs. Oh, God, I come with you, God. I come to you. You said that if I come to you, you said if I'm weary and heavy laden, you will give me rest if I come to you. And so, God, I'm coming to you right now. Come on. It don't matter if you came to him last night. You can come to him again. You can come to him again and you can ask him if you sin against him. You can ask him to forgive you and he'll forgive you. Come on. This is your moment. This is your hour. This is your opportunity. This is your chance. This is your moment in time. Don't allow the enemy to steal it from you. Don't allow doubt and fear and worry and stubbornness to steal it from you. This is your time. This is your season. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your hearts. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we bring it all to you. We bring all your our pain, all of our issues, all of our drama, God, we bring it to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we set up a wailing before you, God. We open up our mouths and we cry hallelujah to your name. For God, you are worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. Oh, God, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, you alone are God. And we thank you. We thank you. We bring it all to you, God, for it's under the table. It's under the table, God. Oh, God, I bless your holy name. It's under the table. But on top of the table, there's a feast waiting for us. On top of the table, there are servants waiting for us. There are angels all around. Hallelujah. That's what the psalmist says. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise and worship now. Hallelujah. Aren't you, don't you know that there is so much for you? The word of God says there is more for you than there are against you. The word of God says greater is he that is in you than in he that is in the world. It is under the table. All the stuff that you have, the king says, come to the table. All the weaknesses of your body, the king says, come to the table. All the lameness in your leg, the king says, come to the table. All your drama of yesteryear and yesterday, the king says, come unto the table. I know that there are many people that will not accept you because of maybe the way you look or maybe the way you dress. But guess what? The king says, come just as you are. The king says, come with all of your burdens because it is his desire to show kindness unto you. That's what David said. He says, is there anyone that I can show kindness to? I want to know, is there anyone watching me and listening under the sound of my voice that you want God to show kindness to you? That you're saying, yes, God, show me kindness. Show me your goodness. Show me your kindness. David says, I would have fainted lest I would believe, I would have lost heart, lest I would have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And so I know that some of the saints used to say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And yes, it will. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. But I'm here to tell you that God is ready to give you kindness now. God is ready to show you his glory now. God is ready to do in you right now what you need. Whatever you need right now, he says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So guess what? Give us this day our daily bread. So come on, can you say, God, show me your kindness. Lord, show me your kindness, God, in the land 
the living. Show me your kindness today, God, not tomorrow. Today, for tomorrow is not promised to any of us, but today is the day of salvation. So I want to see his goodness today. I want to see his mercy today. I want to see his love today. I want to experience his power today. I want to experience his grace today. Amen. Because that's what happened to Mephibosheth. God gave him his food for today. And he said, he told, look what he says in that last verse. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem for he ate continually at the king's table and he was lame in both his feet. I'm here to tell you that even though some things may not change, guess what? God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God will allow you to eat at his table both day and night. God will allow you, he will give you what you stand in need of if you ask him. If you ask him, he says, knock and it, you, the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive, right? He said, you got to ask it, see, and you will find. You got to say, Lord, show me your kindness. God, show me your goodness. God, hear my prayer. God, see my tears. God, know my pain. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, I look to you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And come on, let us pray right now in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, for this time that we have before your people. God, I thank you for the word that you gave me, Lord God, to give unto your people that each of us might experience life today. God, I pray that these words that were spoken by my lips, Lord God, would encourage their souls and strengthen them with faith and belief, Lord God, and that, Lord God, they would be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Father, for you are greater. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so, Father, you can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so, God, we pray for those who are weary and heavy laden, we pray for those who are lost in their sins and those who are broken in their hearts and in their spirits. God, I pray that the words of your word, Lord God, would uh, encourage them, and give them life and light, that God, you would strengthen them from on high, that you would bless them abundantly, and that God, you would show them your kindness today. Let them have a reprieve, let them have utopia, let them have an experience euphoria, God, in their lives to know, Lord God, that you are with them. For you promise you will never leave us or forsake us, but you would be with us always, even until the ends of the earth. So God bless your people in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would strengthen their hearts, that you would fill them with courage and with boldness in the name of Jesus, that you would break every stronghold that wages warfare against their souls. If they are bereaved this morning, that you would be the peace that they need in order to survive. God bless them, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would be the comforter, that you would comfort their hearts, strengthen them in their spirits, build them with holy faith, Lord God, and increase their faith. If they are in sin, Lord God, forgive them of their sins, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, and come into their hearts and save them. God, we want to be saved. We want to see you face to face. So God, save us, deliver us, set us free, God. Come into our hearts and transform us, transform our minds in the name of Jesus. Circumcise our hearts, Father, in Jesus' name, and help us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to come to life. Holy Spirit, we know that no one can come unto the Father unless you draw them. So draw us close to you. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Draw us close that our hearts might burn afresh and that we might cry out, what must I do to be saved? Oh, God, help us in the name of Jesus. We need you as a nation. We need you as a world, as a people as one people, there are no races. There is one people, we are all 
made in your image and likeness, but sin has marred it. So God, reap the harvest in the name of Jesus. Send forth laborers into your vineyard that will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without compromise, that will preach the gospel, Lord God, that, Father, that souls will come into the kingdom and life will be extended to all. God, we thank you. We honor you, Father, and we give your name all the praise, all the honor. We thank you for peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your victory. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your mercy. And God, we thank you for your kindness, for it is under the table. And we thank you, God. No one is allowed to look under the table because <laughs> everybody's eyes are on the king and so God no one sees our flaws but they see you and thank you for inviting us to your table thank you Lord God for allowing us access to your table you didn't have to do it but you did it anyway and so God we bless your holy name and we give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you, people of God. Thank you for joining with me this morning. I pray that this word was an encouragement to you. I pray that it strengthened your heart and given you a little bit more grace to, to be able to handle what you're going through. Right, because we know that our God is able, amen. He is able to help us. And so if this video and if this message was a help to you, why don't you share it with someone else? Share it with someone else that they might be encouraged as well, amen. And so I thank God for each of you. Thank you for joining with me until we meet again, amen. So good to see my uh, 4 One Vision Church family. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.